So guys, I get this little laser, which is this Algo Laser Pixie, and over here I have this 10 watt laser. And now I was thinking that the most logical thing to do is to make some laser induced graphene. So for making some laser induced graphene, you will actually need any sort of dart laser like this one or CO2 laser will also work. And the second thing that I will need is of course some Kapton tape. And now let's jump into the process. So the laser induced graphene is formed when you hit some polymide aka Kapton tape with some intense light then in this case the polymide will decompose into graphene like structure. So if you hit the Kapton tape with some laser then in this case you will get some graphene like structure. But guys keep in mind that beside of graphene you will also get all sorts of other types of carbons as well. So first of all, what I will do, I will put some uh, piece of this captain tape on this glass. So here I have some glass where I will put some strip of the captain tape. Okay. Uh, but now before I will make any sort of supercapacitor or heater out from this captain tape, um, I need to find the right setting uh, for the laser that I will get the best result. So at this point I already make several testings where I try to find the right setting, I mean the right speed and the right power to get the best result. Okay, over here I have the light burn program and over here I have seven strips with different power settings. Uh, so over here you can see the settings for each strip. Here are the settings for the speed and over here are the settings for the power. So at this moment you can see that the speed is set to 80 millimeters per second and the power is from 50 to 20 percent and like i said i already make several tests uh, where i test different speeds and different powers to find the right setting so in this case i test the power settings from 50 to 20 percent at the speed of 100 millimeters per second then i try 90 millimeters per second 80 millimeters per second and 70 millimeters per second and now i will repeat this strip testing uh, that you will be able to see which power setting will be the best uh, so the speed which i will use uh, for this test will be 80 millimeters per second because i found that the 80 millimeters per second was uh, the best uh, and yeah, now I will make seven strips with different power setting uh, and the power will be from 50 to 20%. Okay, and now I will measure what will be the conductivity of each strip. So first I will start with this strip over here, uh, which was made with 20% of power.
and I get around 140 ohms. Then the strip which was made with 25% of power, 47 ohms, 30% of power, uh, 27 ohms, uh, 35% of power, 23 ohms, 40% of power, 13 ohms, 45% of power, 10 ohms, and for the finish, 50% of power. 11 ohms. So in this case you can see that between the 50% of power and 45% of power is not big difference uh, but what is also uh, really important that the strip with 50% uh, of power is too fragile. So for this reason the best result uh, which I get is the strip which was made with a speed of 80 millimeters per second at 45% of power. And now I can also make a little bit closer look of the surface of the strip. So this is actually the closest look of the surface which I can get. And now let's move to a little bit more interesting part of the video where I will make some heater and some supercapacitor out from this capton tape. Uh, so first I will make some little heater and uh, the laser settings will be like you was able to see before. So the speed will be 80 millimeters per second and the power will be set on 45%. Okay, nice. I will just measure the conductivity. Seventy-eight ohms. <laughs> 8 ohms ok over here I have two strips of titanium uh, this will serve like electrodes so these two I will put on each side like so And now I will connect my power supply. So at this moment the temperature is 27.5 degrees C.
and now I will set uh, the power supply to 20 volts and 1 amp and now you can see that uh, the heater take 20 volts and uh, 0 0.25 amps which is actually 257 milliamps Oh, we are already on 53, 54 degrees C. So this heater concept I can actually use in some heating glove application, which I already make in the past. So I make some heated glove, which for the heating element, I use some graphite felt. So this graphite felt was good, but it was a little bit bulky. And for this reason, this kind of heater can be really good for this application because it, it is really slim and uh, I only need the temperature of around 30 to 35 degrees C. And I reach to 100 uh, to degrees C. And for the last experiment, I will also test some laser-induced graphene supercapacitor. So here I have some basic cell design. Um, first, I was thinking to use some uh, graph foil current collectors on each side, but because uh, the graph foils can contribute to the capacity, for this reason, instead of graph foils, I will use these two uh, titanium strips on each side like so and in the middle I will place the electrolyte uh, I will also use this uh, paper, so this paper will be soaked with the electrolyte. I mean, the paper will hold the electrolyte in place. Um, and the electrolyte is some combination of 50% uh, of sulfuric acid and um, I also add a little bit of one mole of sodium sulfate. So I use uh, 10 milliliters of 50% of sulfuric acid uh, and to these 10 milliliters I also add 10 milliliters of one mole of sodium sulfate. I will connect the supercapacitor to my power supply and I will charge with let's say 4 volts so in this case the voltage is a little bit too high but this will be okay for this experiment okay this will be enough of charging so I charge this supercapacitor for about 2 minutes and now I will try to measure the capacity uh, on the Rigel And yeah, I get overload. Just for example, I will also measure this little capacitor, which have around 100 microfarads. Yeah, so the result is 105 microfarads. 
No, I will measure the voltage of the supercapacitor, which right now is 1.4 volts. Oh, 1.5 volts. Not bad. But because the voltage of the supercapacitor is still too low to run uh, to run some LED we note this LED drive. For this reason here I use this voltage booster. And yeah. And the LED works. So in this case, when I connect some load to the supercapacitor, uh, the voltage need to drop a little bit. And yeah, so the voltage drops to 0.85 volts. And now I also put together two cells uh, which are connected in series. So here is the first cell and here is the second cell. Okay, I think that this will be enough of charging. Now I charge less than one minute, but let's see if no can run this LED V-Note, uh, the voltage booster. And yeah. Okay, this don't last very really long. I will charge again. Okay. Oh, really nice. I will also try this LED, which is a little bit more stronger. Ooh! <laughs> Not bad! So guys, this was my little experimentation about this laser-induced graphene. Uh, like you see, I make some heater and also some supercapacitor. And then, so for now, that's it. Like, share and subscribe and we see us in the next video. Bye.